Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're going to talk about a $10 billion investment that the Pentagon is making into space. And I think that this is really important to understand as a Rocket Lab investor. And I got uh, this article sent to me by Francisco Ramirez, who's a fantastically awesome contributing member to our uh, channel family. And he always sends me very, very interesting stuff. And to be honest, I didn't fully understand this data, but I read the article and I thought, okay, I need to make a video about this because if I didn't fully understand this, then there's probably a lot of you who didn't understand it. So I think this can be cool as a Rocket Lab investor. So please make sure you subscribe and let's get the video going. So it starts with investing in space, Pentagon's satellite constellation awards near uh, $10 billion. So um, we start here. A quick refresher. In a few years since the Space Force became uh, the new first U.S. military service branch, uh, since before the Cold War, one of its units has evolved into a satellite building, money slinging, fast moving agency known as the SDA or the Space Development Agency. The unit is aggressively ordering and launching satellites for a new network known as Proliferated Warf uh, Fighter Space Architecture. Uh, so this is the contract that Rocket Lab has gotten, the five point, uh, the, the five, the zero point five billion dollar contract that uh, really made the stock price shoot up, and we have lost all those gains and then some, uh, which we don't understand why. Uh, I actually had to look up proliferated. I had no clue what that meant. So it's here. You can see uh, to proliferate. I can't even say proliferate is a rapid increase in number or multiply. So it's like the increased warfighter uh, space archi architecture. Uh, let's go more into this. So the idea is to build an interconnected constellation a la Starlink that consists of hundreds of satellites instead of dozen or less. The goal of the PWSA is to have more redundancy and greater connectivity for lower risk as each satellite in the constellation costs a fraction of the powerful but bespoke military assets of the past. So very logical. Uh, if you have, let's say, 10 geostationary uh, satellites, they're very heavy, very big, probably cost billions of dollars. Uh, very hard to get them up there. And if the US ever gets into a military conflict and one of those satellites gets shut down, then it messes up the whole military. So now they proliferate the space architecture, meaning they blow it up by the numbers. And instead of having uh, the assets in a geostationary orbit or very high orbits, now these are low earth um, or LEO orbit uh, satellites. And this will be important uh, in a bit. So it makes a lot of sense. And this takes a lot of risk out because if the Russians get angry at the US and they shoot down a satellite out of a constellation of 400, I'm pretty sure that the constellation can keep on going the same way as they have before. And as far as I know, it's crazy hard to shoot down a satellite to begin with. Um, so here we go. The goal of the PWSA is to have more redundancy, a greater connectivity. Yeah, this is where we were. Uh, additionally, each tranche or generation is aimed to be bigger and better uh, than the last, expanding the Space Force's support of the broader U.S. military with capabilities like communications, location targeting, and missile defense. So we are currently at tranche two. This is where Rocket Lab also won a contract, and there is future tranches coming. Um, when we last discussed the PWSA in this newsletter, the SDA had awarded about five billion in contracts to five different companies. Now we're pushing uh, 10 billion in awards and more than 400 satellites with seven companies in the mix. So this is a very nice breakdown of how many satellites and which companies uh, produce how much. And you can see that Rocket Lab here actually got more awarded uh, than SpaceX. And yeah, you can see the companies here. I obviously would have liked to see uh, Rocket Lab much higher on this list, meaning that they would have gotten a much higher contract amount. But I think it's quite an achievement to even make it uh, to this list. So here we go. 
The current uh, PWSA winners by contract area are the three usual suspects, Northrop uh, Grumman, Lock Lockheed Martin, L3 Harris. Uh, but then it gets interesting. York Space has been tapped to make more satellites than anyone uh, but Northrop Grumman to the tune of 1.3 billion. Then you've got Rocket Lab and CRS Space in the mix who jumped into the PWSA with awards this month. Uh, you can see what it's meant to those uh, two most recent additions to the program. Rocket Lab heralded its award as a marking of a new era as a leading satellite prime, while Sierra Space emphasized being put on the short list of companies that can deliver as prime in missions critical to the warfighter. So it's funny, it's, the companies are saying the same thing, except this uh, Sierra Space says it in a very complicated uh, way. A quick caveat is that these contracts are not all equal, especially since they are fixed price deals. Each company bid what they thought uh, could make the satellites for, and each of the trenches have different layers with varying requirements, i.e. different use cases and different demands. But the bottom uh, line is that big money is rolling out now from the SDA. Already the agencies uh, launched the first PWSA satellites, couldn't they have found like a better acronym? It's so it's really not rolling off the tongue and the word is so complicated. PWSA satellites, it began ordering in 2020 and it has about 350 satellites on tap for delivery and launch in the next three years. The SDA is closing out the trench to ordering phase and it's already outlined that the orders for uh, it and it's already outlined that the orders for trench three and four will be coming through the end of the decade. So Rocket Lab fan people thought that maybe Rocket Lab is going to get like another contract in this trench. But as far as I can tell, uh, all the companies were awarded uh, one thing. So nobody was awarded multiple times. And yeah, Rocket Lab happened to get a small piece, but hey, still bigger than SpaceX. And again, we're, I, I think it's a major achievement that we're even on this list. Uh, and here's something that became important. And there's another key part here of these uh, trenches. In addition to upgrading the PWSA's capabilities, replenishment. A low earth orbit constellation means that the PSA satellites will need to be replaced with newer ones and companies who deliver fastest and perform the best will have even stronger bids for what's likely to be more lucrative contracts uh, in the years to come. So if you know, low earth orbit has a tiny bit of atmosphere, which makes a very, very small drag on the satellites. So things that you put on low Earth orbit, they deorbit after, um, I mean, it, it depends on when the set, like the satellite has to keep correcting uh, to stay in the right orbit. And then as soon as the fuel runs out, uh, then, it, then they deorbit. But the point is that, for example, if you have something in geostationary uh, transfer orbit, uh, you basically have no atmosphere at that time and it takes very little fuel to keep something in the correct orbit there so the satellites there can last uh, 30, 40 years. And uh, this, is my, this is part of my bull case of why I think that there is this new space age is because you know we're putting a lot of things into uh, low Earth orbit and we're putting thousands and thousands of satellites. I mean, here the government is uh, putting about 400 uh, satellites and these need to be replenished and you need reusable cheap rockets to put them up. You need to rebuild these satellites and obviously if Rocket Lab is able to uh, really perform well on this contract, keep the schedules which I think that they will be able to do, then they will have a very strong bid uh, for trench three and four and I'm sure that they will get a nice uh, juicy contract. So. I just thought that this would be important to sort out because I heard, you know, SDA, the PWSA didn't really know what it was. And I think that this cleared up really well, who was the winners, you know, uh, where we are and what are the next uh, uh, tranches. So I hope that this gave you value. If it did, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support the channel, there is a Patreon link in the description box below. Uh, currently, there's not much on it. In the future, I will be adding um, value and my thesis and analysis of different uh, companies. But if you join Patreon, it's five bucks a month. It's purely to support the channel and I would thank you very much for it. Thank you so much for spending time with me 
and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.